What is up guys? Welcome back. We are in Las Vegas at SEMA right now. We've been here for a couple of days. Haven't been filming much at all. Been basically talking with friends and companies and doing the SEMA thing. But I wanted to make sure we put together a little bit of an episode for you guys to show you some of my favorite cars here in Las Vegas. And one of them is behind me. You guys know that my father owned a towing company, so naturally a body drop and slammed tow truck is definitely one of them. So C30, pre-square body, bodied on the ground. They even lifted the false floor of the bed, kept the diamond plate, kept all like the uniform, like pinstriping. So it looks like it wasn't body dropped. Watts linkage in the rear. Very cool setup. All right, so we're here with Max from Eva. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so Max from Eva Resto is actually here. And you guys know that that's who I've been working with on all the air-cooled projects. Him and his wife have come over from England and your first SEMA. Absolutely, first SEMA. Um, kind of first time in America, at least for 22 years. So the first time- Technically your first time in America. Yeah, yeah. First time as an adult that knows what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so your first SEMA in a nutshell. First SEMA, um, wild. Like yep. so much going on, way too much to absorb in two days because we are only here for two days. Yeah, two out of the four. Yeah, yeah, um, but that'll save on your feet. Yeah, absolutely. Those are not. These are not walking shoes. SEMA shoes. However, they are <laughs> a lot more comfortable than the shoes I was wearing yesterday. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But um, no, it's just everything here. I mean, the nice thing is, there's nothing here that I've ever seen before. Yeah. And I don't spend a lot of time on the internet watching like a lot of car builder stuff. So it, everything, literally everything, is fresh. Like I've yep. never seen anything here before. It's because you're too busy building cool stuff. I mean, kind of. I'd, I'd, I'd <laughs> yeah. like to say that. Yo, I'm saying it. Partially true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's wild. There's some absolutely incredible stuff here. So I mean, this is. This is mega. Yeah. This is one of the first things that you pointed out yep. when I met you on the Monday night. Yeah. This was like you were showing me the, the wheels, having machine to fit the low profile tires, and it's yep. all just a different world to me. Like we don't have anything like this at home. Which is just so. These nuts. are truck wheels with is it ten lugs? Ten lugs. Ten yeah, lugs. the semi truck wheels. So, yeah, and then the machine down to fit a small tire, and you know, yep. I had no idea that's even done. And that's know? like the the big thing and for these trucks. Incredible. But like, it's still got the original like push bumper on it. Yeah. This is for like pushing cars out of the and way. It's mint. It's one. It's ten out of ten immaculate, perfectly built. Yes. Built perfect patina. Yep. It's Bodied with the tow like. truck bed. I mean, it's I'm bodied, biased, but it's laid. Uh, completely like, laid. laid. Properly laid. <laughs> there is no dispute in this thing's on the floor. Man. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is like unlike anything we ever see. I mean, you go to shows in the UK and it's bagged Audis, you know. Right. That's, that, right. that's what makes up the, the biggest demographic of cars. Yep. Whereas you come here and you've got trucks mainly make up most of it. But we go from stuff like this to like lifted enormous things down there. Exactly, which you can really see the trucks over the heads of people. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. I mean the blind spot of a truck is a hundred meters in front. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, it's a complete almost like culture shock, but it's, man, it is, it's wild. It's here. so cool that you got Some, a chance to come out here. Oh, it's, yeah. it's huge. It's great to come here, meet you guys, hang out, yep. eat in and out burger. Yeah, oh yes, amazing. that's key. Yes, yep. we were able to take you to In-N-Out Burger. John took some brilliant pictures of me eating a burger, which I'm really thankful for. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> but you got a thumbs up on In-N-Out, right? Oh God, yeah, fantastic. Amazing, See? really, awesome. really nice quality food. All right, so we're here with my buddy Ryan's Civic that he has done a dual motor, all wheel drive electric swap. He's got two here. He's got the white hatch out in the Toyota Tread Pass that's just front wheel drive, but this is his all wheel drive swap. He owns a company called Rywire, and he's done all of the engineering and harness building for this swap. And you guys know me, I'm not an EV guy, but this is just unbelievable. Motor in the back. What a wild build. We'll get you guys some shots of the white car out at the Tread Pass a little later. Talked Bay. All mil spec connectors, mil spec everything. Look at this connector right here. All right, most of you guys know my undying love for Hakos, first gen Skylines, and 
external oil cores. Love that Shackleton buses Oku look. First gen Skyline is definitely on the list. Bucket list car for sure. I would even take a four door. All right, guys, we're here at the Rova Motor Oil booth. We're over at Apex right now. Uh, they're not at SEMA, but they're over at Apex, and it's going on at the same time. Got a chance to sit down with Ken and talk about the coming year uh, with Rova as a part of the shop. So Rova came on as a shop sponsor uh, last year, and we're going to be carrying a lot of their products from their coolant to their brake fluid. You guys know I've been running the 2050 and the vintage tins uh, since before our partnership. Been running this in all the air-cooled cars, the E23, the 944. Uh, basically everything runs the 2050 Rova. And I've mentioned this before, but they make this for Porsche. So Porsche's 2050 is Rova, just rebranded. And as well as the brake fluid. So the brake fluid is also rebranded for Porsche, made by Rova. Sounds like a lot more here. <laughs> Fish face. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Mindy Caesar. They're so handsome. The fishes. All right, we got Max and George from the UK here. Their first time to Vegas. That's what we got. <laughs> Don't even want to eat it. That is not natural food front of Central Hall with my buddy Justin with arguably probably my favorite car here as you guys could probably imagine I gravitate to all the weird stuff so what year is the Dauphine it's a 1960 Renault Dauphine like 60 1960 yep Just something about that year so Good year. my 700 and the 1000 SP are both 60s yep. thank you that's pretty cool some of you guys have seen Mike Unlands on the channel he's beetle panned a couple of his gone super low Really cool cars. Justin's gone a different route. He's gone a totally different route. Super wide body. I don't even know where to begin. I really don't. Were you searching for a Dauphin? I wasn't. No. no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not like a like a Renault guy. You know, I like Renaults. I like. I'm, I'm more of a Euro guy. You know, I grew yeah, up yeah. BMWs and Volkswagens, air cooled yep. and water cooled. Um, but I've always liked French cars. They always have like a really, like, like a unique. Like weirdness to them, you know. Right. Every single one of them have their own little like character to them. And uh, I had the idea of like the roller skate version of this. So mid-engine VR6, push rod suspension. I had that idea before I had this body. Okay, right? so you kind of wanted to do a VR6 swap push rod suspension car. Mid-engine car. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, okay. I, and I was gonna do it on like a 1600, like a like a BMW 1600 or. Or a, or a Volkswagen thing, or just like, you know, yeah, yeah. Like old Simca, whatever, you know, some old cool car yep. that, that I liked. Um, and then I saw this one on Facebook Marketplace, and it was like, the, my favorite patina color is blue and green, and this is like a blue-green color. So cool. Perfect. Perfect car for the situation. And then I just built the chassis to suit the car. So if you look at it, like, the throttle body is right at the back window, you know, so the, yeah. the engine is where it had to be to be there. I, I extended the wheelbase for me, you know, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bigger guy. You know, it just made the car that I wanted to make. So the wheelbase is a little bit longer than the Dauphine originally? Yeah, so it's two and a half inches forward, and okay. then it's two inches back. So it's like 
four and a half inches total longer than, than the factory one, but it's 21 inches wider than the factory Dolphin. The wide body work you did to it hides the fact that you've lengthened the wheelbase, I think. Yeah. Now, what did you end up making the wide body pieces out of? Like, because I'm assuming you had to like hand make all that I stuff. did hand make them. Yeah. So I did it old fashioned way with, with boat flotation foams. I put, made, a, made a big box, you know, and then covered the wheels, boat, boat flotation foam, and then cut and shaped into what I wanted. Wow. And then rinse and repeat it on the opposite side. I made it perfect. And then I bought, then I, then I fiberglassed that, body worked that, and then laid the carbon fiber on top of it and built wow, that up there. Wow, so cool. Yeah. Very satisfying to start with nothing, you know, there. Yeah. And then create, like, what you, like, I saw it before I built it, you know, you can right. like, see what I wanted. Yep. So being able to, Create it out of nothing is always is oh, a very satisfying. Yeah. Thing. Had you done anything like that before? Or was this your first go around with? I've done I've done smaller carbon things, you know, that don't make they don't matter as much. Right. And I've done a decent amount of uh, fiberglass. Yeah. Fiberglass is not carbon fiber. The problem with carbon no. fiber is the, the end result is the carbon fiber. So the weave has to be right, and you can't body work it. You know. Right. So the, the top layer is the carbon and wow. is the resin. So I'm assuming the door is functional. Is functional. Oh, it's like, amazing. Can, uh, So it, it functions. Cool. Yeah. Man, that is awesome. 12 valve? 24 Tw valve. 24 valve, okay, yeah. all right. Out of like a, a 2004 Volkswagen GTI, 2003 2004 Volkswagen GTI, yep. with the O2M six speed. So you've got basically the front end of. Yep. Well, yep. Just, just the um, axles, the transmission, and the engine. I, I built my own subframe. I love the sound of VR6s, and for packaging, it was the best for my, you know, what I wanted to accomplish. I'm not a big fan of four cylinders, you know, like inline four, they don't really sound the best to me. The VR6 is any Volkswagen guy's favorite motor. You know? Totally. I built a six to one header for it, and it's straight pipe, so the exhaust is only, you know. Yeah. I put 10,000 miles on it since I first built it. Oh, so cool. Yeah. I love the pushrod suspension setup. This is something I've been wanting to do in a project for a long, long time, and right. I haven't even dipped my toes into the waters yet so it's really cool to see other friends right. messing with that type of suspension it's it's not rocket surgery you know it's, it's right the, the, the premise behind it is pretty pretty easy as long as you understand workload for angles what type of coilovers they are uh why is your 1000 like so like r1 rear, rear coil oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 this is a budget build it was never oh yeah, to yeah. Be like me uh, like a fancy car did you preach it to the choir right <laughs> so these are just sport bike rear off of ebay so cool. Coilovers. I just re, I, I just resprung them with some yeah. some Eibach springs, you know, to get the the the, what, the weight right for them. But yeah. You pretty happy with the ride? Yeah, it, it's surprisingly good for what it is. That's awesome. Radiator up front, or do you have it? Radiators like, in mid? the middle. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, I did see this. The uh, center console is a duct that goes. So the whole bottom of the car is flat plate aluminum from the very the front of the splitter all the way to the back of the engine. Yep. So all flat aluminum. So above the splitter and beneath the trunk floor, right? There's a, there's a void there, and that goes directly into the center console, and then yep. travels through the center of the car into the radiator. Oh, that's perfect. So it gets direct air feed from the front of the car. Yep, the simplicity of the interior, too. Like, the fact that you've got the original door cards and window yep. crank handles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I love, I love the old car, so I love, like, keeping yes. the essence of yeah, the that's, Renault. That's why I have all the trim work, right? So I put all the trim work back in where it was, like, yep. part, part of the part of the kit you know yeah yeah and the badges and then the badges used to be here but they didn't that's right any longer so i moved it up here a perfect know, spot for it the, just to keep them kind of on yep. the vehicle because i like oh, look. the only reason it has a trunk floor in it is because yeah. of these stickers that's it like i didn't another I, thing i would have left i didn't yeah, want exactly I, I could not get rid of the the, 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 the signage in there it's just too perfect so american market right now American market yeah, Renault. Yeah. So it, it, when I got it, it was left-hand drive. I converted to right-hand drive when I was building it because why not? Why not? You know? Yeah. Why not? I lived in Japan for a while and I like Japanese cars, so yeah. why not build the way I want to build it, right? Think of the Renault as just like an RC body. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. all that's left is the RC, is the thin little RC body on top. The rest of the car is all me. So the whole yeah. front end is all a custom chassis that I made. How heavy is it? It's like 2,200 pounds. Okay. There, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not crazy light. Like mostly coverage. frame and motor. Oh, mostly roll cage and motor yep. and frame. Yeah. The 700 weighed in at 1632. Oh, okay. So from the factory, it was like 1200 something. Yeah, this was 1400 from the factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, very light, small okay. motor. So the wheels are a company called Felgen Factory. They're, they're an Italian company and they're really cool. It's like a small, bespoke company. The fronts are 10 inch. And, or 10 and a half inch. 18s? Uh, 17. 17s, 17, okay. And the back is uh, 17 by 11 and a half. 
and there are two or three fifteens in the back. Wow. Proxies? Proxy. Proxies. Yep. yep. You did an excellent job, Justin. Thanks, Dude, buddy. The car is Thanks, so man. sick. We For need sure. to somehow figure out how to get our cars together in like the same maybe place. Maybe in the middle of the country place. somewhere we'll meet. Definitely one of my favorites. Thanks, man. For sure. All right, guys. A lot of you may recognize this car. This is Charles's Mark Seven and a Half Golf R with the R S3 swap that I helped him bag, and then he ultimately put on Coney coilovers. This thing is so sick. It was still a super fun time getting a chance to work with Charles on his channel, bagging this car. It's got the Ottinger full wide body kit on it. All right, so as everyone's rolling out, I'm finally getting a chance to get some shots of some of my favorite cars here without crowds around them. And one of them is Custom by Kex C4 Corvette. Now, I know it's not a popular opinion, but I've always loved C4 Corvettes, especially a manual early model. But what's really cool about this one, other than the ultimate 90s Miami livery and custom three-piece Corvette saw blades, is the power plant. It's got a turboed OM606 Mercedes turbo diesel in it. And that is just the coolest C4 swap ever. What was your favorite car? Yeah. Of SEMA 2024. Honestly, huh. I think I think Ryan's Rywire's uh Oh yeah, the Civic? The, yeah, the EK hatch. The, the all-wheel drive one? Yeah. yeah. Those Civics were definitely up there with some of my favorite cars as well. All right, guys, well, that is the end of SEMA 2024. As you can see, everyone's tearing their boots down. This has been a look at some of my favorite cars, although I probably should have filmed many more here. But honestly, I did more work for the channel and for Ludwig's Garage uh, than I did film. So it's really been an advantageous trip out here to SEMA and a real productive one. So I'm really looking forward to showing you guys some of the things we have planned for 2025. Thank you guys so much for watching and for all the support. Maybe we've got one more in and out date. We've done in and out twice already. So third time's a charm for us East Coasters. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're diving right back into shop build out. We got shop build out and then we're right back on the 1000 SP project from the new shop in New Hampshire. So I really appreciate you guys watching that series. I'm glad you're enjoying it for the most part. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.